Hello everyone, welcome to another Average Angler live match video. We're at Acorn once again, one of my favourite haunts. It's the last Tuesday open before Christmas, 2021. Uh, I turned up thinking, oh, I bet it's going to fish hard today to find 25 anglers plus booked on. I think there might have even been a couple of extra names added at the bottom. That's quite a lot of anglers for this lake. So it's going to be even harder than that. Even, even harder than I expected it to be. And on top of that, I've drawn one of the probably two worst pegs on the lake at this time of year. This time of year, the fish tend to vacate the area that I'm in. I've drawn peg 20, uh, 22, 23, 24. I'm on 25. A moment there, I forgot what peg I was on, but I'm on peg 25. I would say 24, 25 are the ones you don't want to be on today. Um, but there we are, we are, it is what it is, we've got an, a good good quality of field today, there's ships here again, he's down. The, he's a bit further down the straight there, I don't know who's drawn the flyer pegs on 9, 5, 11, but um, they're going to have a good chance today with it fishing so hard, there'll be, you know, there'll be some people that may be like me that can't get a bite, um, so anyway, what we what we got set up, we set up, we've got I set up a rig for tight, really, really tight over, slow falling maggot, for dob, sort of dobbing, not feeding anything, and then I've set up a rig to go over the top of that rig, or well, over the top of the same areas of the swim, but it's about six to eight inches shallower, so it's off the bottom, and that's for bread, dobbing over. I found, found sometimes the bigger carp, they just seem to want to be dobbed off the bottom. So I'll probably go straight over and start on that, see if there's a big carp sitting in any of my holes before I put my kit on the bottom. I've then plumbed up to my left, because I've got nobody on this peg, so I've plumbed up the fish kind of just in front of that peg, in the white water there where I can see the float. That's going to be like a pellety silvers line where I'm going to put my crushed expander. If you've seen the video that previous to this one, you'll know what I mean. If not, watch the video previous to this one. And then I've also set up a little line here where I'm just going to loose feed maggot. It's in the deep water. It's about it's a float slump shallower there than it is in the middle over there. So I'm just going to fish down here. Um, I might just throw lot. I'm literally going to throw two or three maggots, not lot loads at all, and then I'll just drop on it after I've done a bit of dobbing. I'll, I'll, I'll feed it for like um, 30 minutes, and I might just drop on it after I've done a bit of dobbing, see if anything's there. Bites might be a premium today. That's it. That's my plan. In my mind, I've not set up any margin rigs. I've not any. I've not set up anything for the bottom of the far slope. But if I feel like that's something I can do, I can dock to this short rig. If it's not working, it'll be long enough. I'll be able to bring it into the bottom of the far slope and then the near slope and just sit it out for a lump. But I feel like uh, if we get into that stage, then we're already out of it. So, a bit of a long intro. This will be my last. Oh no, I've got one more Thursday, and that'll be the last one before Christmas. So. Next time you see me, we'll be fishing. Right, everyone, we're 55 minutes in. Got maybe three pounds. I've had that in the last five, ten minutes. Dobbed all the way across far bank of bread. Didn't even get an indication. Just fishing just off the deck. Try down to my... Uh, platform to my left and down my left hand edge a little bit as well. So I've switched over to the maggot rig. So the same setup as we've been doing up here quite a lot recently. And I had a small lot two pound well I had two car basically three pound between them. So one was under a pound one was just over two pound probably. So um put the camera on here update and see if I can catch another one for you. I'll write it. Pushing the rig in against far bank, no feed, no anything, just a slow falling rig, not got maggot on, just waiting for something to nibble it. Single maggot at the minute, I've had a little roach as well, obviously they're about nibbling and whatnot. Just have to get off my box to sort out all the cameras because they're a mess. And the float don't want to seem to sit right, so either I've knocked a shot off in the process. It's just caught on something, let's see what happens. Put it in this time. That's better. Oh, I bite as well. Yeah, so that's better sitting there now. I think that's that bite had something to do with it, but 
Yeah, definitely take me on the drop. Keep settling. Some of these smaller fish are anyway. Two carp I've had of him sort of when the float settled. So I've been over my skimmer line to the left to find out a quick look. See what there's anything on there. And I've had one and then I've bumped another. And then I've just gone over thinking I'm not gonna get another bite over it now and I've just up this which if it's a skimmer it's foul up. Not fighting hard like it's a carp, it could be a tench. Or a nice F1 or something like that sort of size. It's not massive. But it's something to add to our weight of virtually nothing. Probably not going to be a perch one because of the upgrade that we've got on. So I would have thought if it was a skimmer, it would have had it set up by now, so it's probably a little carp. We've got very light elastic on here, so. It's a little carpy. <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to catch one of them down there. There's another little two pound. I'll better turn the cameras on because that might be the only action of excitement we get today. Definitely gonna have to feed after him because he'll have eaten up quite a bit. I'm tempted to start loose feeding up the far bank, but I feel like it's a bit early for that. Rubbish, but it'll do. Um, I don't know when I can scare them on this line, and I know it's not going to be up because it's going to be somewhere to go later. Like, there's definitely signs of fish over there, and as we know, I've caught on here. Wow, and I've pinged bait over, and then I've pinged maggots over to the far bank. You obviously can't see where I'm fishing on the camera because it's white out of the shot here to the left I'm virtually in front of the platform next to me not quite almost down the middle so 13 about 12 and a half meters to my left sort of fishing in the deep water we mentioned in the last video that the one with mixing the ground baits that I found like I need to fish down the middle at eight on the missed out on bonus fish that didn't seem to want to be at the bottom of the fast slip for some reason so I thought we'd give it a try today Fire locker on here, guys. So I thought I'm in the camera, see if I can get him out for you. Not convinced I will get him out. I'm taking my time with him, bite, you know, literally. Bikes of a premium today. I knew he was far up as soon as I struck into him. He just lift, I just had a little indication of the float lifted and the float came out of the water about a float's length before he connected with the fish, so he's, you know, six inches off the bottom. I don't think he's massive. You never know if I looked fish and where he's been hooked. If he's hooked around the mouth, then he's a big fish, but if he's been hooked in the tail, he could be a little tiny thing. He's a little four pounder, I think. What I've seen. I don't put any more force on because I don't want to pull the hooks out of him. I had him on for 10 minutes. I weren't going to put the camera on. I thought, I'll get, I'll see, it'll probably come off. I won't put the camera on, but he's been on for so long. I've got a chance with this one now. Let's see. Just let him tie himself out a bit now. If he weren't coming up, then I was pulling him, but he weren't coming up. Dude, he swam into the net and he couldn't swim anywhere else. He had to go backwards into the landing net. Actually, he's a of the hive. Which is nice, I think he's just under the wing. Not in the fin there, look. It's the sort of place where when you walk in there, there's a good or cold. 
normally get him out. I'm gonna give myself, he's fat. I'm gonna give myself these five for him. So that's doubled my weight. And ten pounds, which is brilliant. And that was just dobbing over on the deck with the racket. Like, like, like I came off the, um, I came off the skimmer line after that car because uh, couldn't uh, couldn't get another bite on it. And I've just gone over onto the car bank line. A little indication I found up Tim right. Right guys, it's 12.40, so we're going two hours and 40 minutes, so we're just over halfway through. Just had a good 20 minute stint, 25 minute stint on my skimmer line. Had one skimmer on it. So it's not exactly going wild. So, I don't mind because it rests off. It rests this um, diving line. I'm not feeding it at the moment, I'm just going over the nicking of fish. I'm going to have to pick up the wrong rig here in a second. Yeah, I picked up the wrong rig. I don't think so. So I picked up the wrong rig anyway. Yeah, so we've, I've got about ten pound. I have that barrel locker. Shortly after, I've got another one that I lost him. And then uh, I've gone down to move. So since I yeah, so this is what's happened since I spoke to I hooked one more car, lost him, and I've gone down to the uh, um, skimmer line and had one. So now I've just topped it up again because it doesn't seem to be responding at all to any bait or anything. Um, don't seem to be responding to anything. So now I'm going to go out on my skimmer line, uh, not my skimmer line, not my double line, up the far bank again, and just go around a few holes. Let's see if I can lift the car for two again. Gary on pig 31 opposite me, got a little runner car dubbing earlier, but he seems to have slowed down as well. So it's all gone a bit hard work. Fishing's the banter's definitely in, you know, gone up a notch because no one else is, no one's catching, so the model have a bit of banter. I expect to get a bite pretty quick on this, it's gonna happen. Push it into your spot and slip it in there. You'll get an indication from it or a bite off it. Wind has changed, so it's dark coming in. The wind's coming off my back, it's not helpful because it pushes your rig in, into the danger zone when it comes to getting snagged. It's pushing you, you know, your rig in. It's brilliant at the minute. See, right on the spot now, that's nice. Let's see if we get, if we get a indication there. I'll look something, I think. Or maybe it's just something small. Quite a little bit rig quite a way out of the water, so strange. Say again? <laughs> Another foul looker, mate. It's not big, I can feel it. It's just a little, it's a small cart foul up probably in the tail. You can see it wagging.
I'm going to go over there in my shallower rig, I think. The one I'll just put there. Um, it didn't work earlier in the day, but that was earlier in the day. It might be it was just a little bit too shallow. I don't know. I'd say not far away. I'll just float slip off the bottom. Not I'll just try that. I'll try that with a bit of bed. Because you know, you're not, you can't keep far looking on fish, you just don't get them out in the end. I've been lucky, we've got a couple there that have been hooked in places that are good for getting up far up to fish out. But I don't mean them. Um, I don't mean I'm going to be lucky out for the rest of the day. It could be there, could be maybe two lucky ones. Could put up five fish and I'm losing them. I'll work out how to get them in the move. That would be nice. There's definitely a few fish in this particular spot at the moment, so I'm going to put it right tight in there and see if I can get them just off the bottom because they seem to be about a float to look off the deck when I get them. 20 minutes to go, guys. 20 minutes to go. Up this one, I've not looked to fish for ages. I've still only got about 11 pounds carp and some silvers. This is, I feel this is up in the mouth. It felt, it, I felt a couple of headbangs off it when I first looked at it. So many pairs. There we go, yeah. That's nice. A little two pound to add to the bag. Just started doing what's been working for me the last few matches, and that's pinging maggots at the end. Just at the end of the match, fishing over and just pinging maggots. Obviously, it's not very accurate fishing, so I can't put in maggots at 12 and a half, 13 meters. But you're not pinging much, you're just doing like a little, a little bit too far. It's quite a lot shorter than that. I usually fish in. There we are, a couple going in. I'm going to put a couple more in because most of them are going up the bank. That's better. I'm just um, going over with a maggot on and taking just some air on. I've been enticed into feeding because of a bit of bank going in. Tried on me short, I did buy him. I've not had much success. I tried, I tried on my. Uh, Longer pellet line, and I'm not like, the last putting like, the last time I went, I didn't have any look over it. Oh, I had a little tench which you haven't seen, so I've had a, a small tench, less than a pound, sort of you know, a few ounces. And I've had that today, um, today, I've had that since I last spoke to you. Sorry, makes it sound like I've been more than a day, doesn't it? Oh. See, this pin there, it does, it does make something happen. Four or five of these, plus that tension with some roach. I've probably got two or three pound of skimmers, really. All said and done. In fact, not on nothing, but it's probably like another carp. So that's nice. Could we yell and get some for it, though? We've got a few yellows, but. Um, I just mixed in with the others. Definitely a 
have the trouble with this cat, he's a little bit too powerful for the short range. That's better. And just, um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, yeah, just move to this spot where the spot where I was fishing before. It just, the rig just didn't seem to ever want to sail in there. It's weird. So I moved to, to the right a little bit. Never, a branch got moved and I caught a fish out of that other rig, or out of that other swim or something. I just could never get the rig back. Just try and move a little bit to the right, very nice at a spot where I can sort of get in when the wind blows, the, the line gets caught up and stuff, and this is a nice clear spot. Oh, there's a little roach just down. Um, just check the bait, and that was a little roach. Got a carp and a skin. Skin around there, the roach. I think I've already had a roach out of that hole anyway. A couple of people around this end of the lake are packing up. Bonus lump, we've got uh, 15 minutes to go now. I thought to turn the cameras on and have a chat with you because nothing's been happening. This is the most activity I've had for the last hour. I've just not had anything. I had that tench that I was talking about. I've had a, a, a roach. A couple of roach over that short line where I've been throwing the maggots by hand all day, but I've not been able to catch over it properly. Hard work. Full stop. Rig's not settled down properly. That ain't settled down properly for that rig. I like that. Rig. went under, I weren't looking what I was doing. Look back, the float was gone. Make shook its head, it's another proper up point. Another little two pound or something like that. That's so strange, isn't it? Thank you very much, little three pounder. Fingers on that, is that it that far down his truck? He's definitely free, isn't he? Sixteen pound a cart, maybe two or three pound a bit. Some boys might, might just be able to sneak twenty pound, which would be a good result today from really poor area when people have backed off. And Gary opposite, he's got a good chance of framing forty pound. 